And the first point on the agenda is questions and issues, open forum. Does anyone have anything uh, they would want to discuss what's not on the agenda? Okay, hearing nothing, let's move to the open PRs and issues. So there is one issue which is opened. Jakub, wanna speak to it? Yeah, I just want to ask Tom if uh, he can go through and do a review. That's this is basically it. Me? Yes. Okay, yeah, I can look at that. Uh, which one's that? 6308. Yeah, basically it's a kind of fix to my previous PR where I dealt with uh, unwanted lock. This is a proper way. How yeah, you, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem. I'll look at that today. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next issue... Is the PR number three in the access operator, Kate? Yeah, I think this one's pretty close to being mergeable. I think the last discussion was just on the naming of that class. So I thought um, it might be worth just bringing it up since the agenda is short to see if we can get this merged. So do you want to merge it or do you want to talk about the exception name? Well, I guess the question is, are people happy with the name? So I think the name in the current version is Kafka resource parse exception, but with an S because I, not with a C, I think. <laughs> Might be worth clicking to see the current version of the file. Yeah, it's with S. Yeah, okay, good. Um, yeah, so the, I think the the comment was um, whether or not Kafka resource parse exception is too vague and makes it sounds like it's a problem with Kafka rather than a problem with the Kafka and Kafka UZ that are owned by Strenzi. Yeah, that would be kind of my first read when I see something like Kafka resource parse exception. But if everyone else thinks it's fine, we can just merge it as it is. I mean, I guess I don't have a very strong opinion, but I can see what, what you're saying here. Um... So I, I propose an alternative of Strimzy resource pass exception. Is resource pass exception not enough? Possibly. Originally, Does it was that just not imply. Hey, there's this exception. resource that we tried to pass and we couldn't. Could be also custom resource parse exception. To make it yeah, more perhaps. clear what kind of resource that is. Yeah, perhaps that's the right thing to do. Yeah, agree. Or, or at least I like custom resource. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll change it to that then. Okay. Anyone has any other PRs to discuss? Uh, sorry, Kate, it just came to my mind. Just check if uh, something similar doesn't exist in the SDK. I'm not sure if I don't know the Java SDK has something like custom resource exceptions related stuff, so. Okay, yeah, I'll check. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it for PRs and issues. There's nothing in the open proposals and I don't think there were any changes about the proposals, anything new. So 
I guess there's maybe nothing to discuss today. Okay, then the next point on the agenda is the KubeCon EU. So I guess all maintainers got the email about uh, the KubeCon EU. I guess we want to do virtual office hours like we did last time. Yeah, I would say yes. I was just wondering, uh, uh, so this time we have a kind of new feature, like for example, your stream zipot set implementation, right? Just for, yeah, for discussing more new things instead of covering. It's not really a new feature, it's more uh, implementation detail. Yeah, okay, but at least we have something new to talk about. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's in May, right? It should be middle of May. It's uh, mid-May, yeah. yeah, 16 to till 20th. So maybe we will have something new, hopefully. Uh, by the way, yes, uh, I, I agree that we can do that. So who's going to handle it? Last time was me. So I don't know, this time. Sounds like you are volunteering again. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> by the way, I can do if you want anyway. Okay. Just uh, as usual, because I don't know what I have with the CNCF CubeCon related emails, if you can forward to me the email. Yeah, ping me offline, please. Okay. Okay. Then uh, the issue triage I'm promising for two months now. So I actually planned the first call for 22nd February, 3 p.m. Central European time. It's in the Streamzy calendar. So uh, yeah, everyone who subscribed to that can, uh, can join and uh, yeah, let's see how how that goes. It's a it's a Zoom call similar to the community calls. So let's just invite for everyone who would be interested. Then I guess the next point on the agenda is the incubation. Yeah, so um, we've made a little bit of progress um, in that uh, Paolo's kindly put together a draft for um, the PR that we open on the um, TOC repo in order to request review for incubation. Um, but we've not really sort of got that into a state that it's really sort of ready for ready to go or ready for sort of further wider review yet. So hopefully next week, uh, sorry, in a couple of weeks we'll have, we'll have got that far. Yeah, so I was gathering a little bit of information uh, after our call with, uh, with Chris from CNCF, taking a look at the other uh, proposal for incubation in order to try to define a kind of template and uh, that we should follow. Uh, and also uh, checking and reading the due diligence page on the CNCF in order to understand what are the yeah the kind of topics that we have to cover for this. Uh, I would like just to raise one point. I noticed that um, in our repo we are missing um, um, things related to to security. So it seems that uh, all the other projects uh, across incubation and uh, and uh, what's the, the best one? Uh, so after incubation, we have? Graduated. Graduated, right. Um, they have a security.md file where um, there are information about, for example, uh, how people from the community can raise a security issue. 
Uh, most of them are, 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 are files containing just, I don't know, send an email to this mailing list and uh, things like that. Or for example, um, a table with, um, or a, a description about, for example, uh, the, the, the Streamity project uh, provides uh, to fix security issue for uh, every minor version up to this version, for example. So it seems that mo most of the project has this security MD file and the proposal to incubation point to this security file so when it comes to this topic. There's no standardized way how to how to get these information. So there's the security tab on the GitHub repo and the security policy is there. That's uh, inherited from the Uh, there is this special repo, which is, which is, which is. This one. Where you can put these things like the security oh, MD and okay. so on. I, I, I have never noticed this dot GitHub repo that we have on the stream Z, to be honest. Okay, so the security file is there. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if so you it's want kind to of edit... hidden. Yeah. No. So it seems a little bit kind of hidden because all the other project has this file in the root of the main project. So Kida or FluentD or all the others, it's not kind of hidden behind some security tab in GitHub and then this dot GitHub well, repo. I don't know if it makes sense it, to move there. It's not hidden. Right, it's the standard way where you can get the security information in every GitHub repo. So you don't need to try. If you follow this, the user should not need to figure out whether it's a security or cvs.md or whether it's in some other MD file. It's kind of a standardized way how to how to get it. Okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, okay, so we can just point to this. Uh section in our uh, security related topic in the proposal. Uh, I will try, yeah, to, to update this with uh, more information. Uh, uh, yeah, try to compare what, which what the others are, are providing. Yeah, so I don't have problem if you want to add the file there, but this is kind of easier because you basically have it in every repo automatically this way. And every user can basically find it very easily without uh, searching through the files. And yeah, I was I just thinking it was actually Chris who pointed this uh, to us as an easier way to do it. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't know that. So uh, I, I will double check if, for example, I don't know, the other projects are using this uh, this way, but they have also a security MD file in the root repo, or they are just using a different way that Chris suggested us. So they are just using this file and not using this way. I will check because, yeah, sorry, I didn't know about this uh, way to define the security policy here. Yeah, the advantage is that you have it in the in the bridge and everywhere basically, and it's sourced from one place. So you don't yeah. need to update it in, uh, yeah, yeah, in five sure. different places and so on. Yep. Yeah, and that was uh, just the only thing that uh, yeah was highlighted on this. So, yep, I'm writing a kind of draft or gathering, uh, so as much information as possible to writing down the draft. Just adding that uh, I think that uh, we are kind of in a good shape. Uh, the main point is about highlighting three end users, customers or companies using this, trying to a little bit of the description of this. So we have to deal with it at some point and having three end users that are using this Streamizy project in production. We have some in the adopters so we can check if we can get more information about how they are using it. 
was that part of the proposal? Wasn't that uh, something what whoever from TOC will be handling the incubation would talk with? I don't remember that I read that in the doc. It's, it's just mentioning about um, highlighting three and final users using the streams in production. Let me just... Uh, so the link that I was reading was... If you go here, uh, pasted the link into the chat. There is the section about, where is this one? No, it's not this. No, it's not this, it's this other one. One sec. Yeah, this one. And uh, incubating stage graduation, the first point is document that it is being used successfully in production by at least three independent end users. I think we are here, aren't we? Sandbox graduation? No, yes, for, not for, uh, for going into incubation, right? It's graduation, so my English would interpret it as that this is to graduate from sandbox and get into incubation, and this is to graduate from ah. incubation and get to. Uh, yeah, Jesus, that's I can't my remember. understanding as well. I can't remember what's the third level. <laughs> Whatever I think you understand. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Jakob. It's the, it's the first one, the sandbox graduation exit requirement. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we have just the first, these three topics from sandbox graduation, not all the others. In Yeah, so if I remember for the sandbox graduation, the, the so someone from TOC will be assigned to us to kind of handle the graduation and do the uh, analysis and so on and they will probably want to speak with some end users, but I don't think it needs to be kind of uh, formally documented as uh, part of the incubation proposal. Yeah, that's what I recollect as well. Okay, so maybe just the, the, the suggestion that Chris gave to us, they decided to to write more about these end users, but it's not needed. Not not in the not in the PR that we submit to the TOC. I think they'll be in touch after we submit that to say, you know, can you give us some people to contact who are end users that we can talk to, and then they'll go away and talk to them. So the, this first point is just about mentioning these three independent end users. And I then think we don't they... mention this at all in the PR that we open on the TOC repository. I think we'll be asked about that subsequently. So as sorry, Tom. Due, as part of the due diligence that the TOC will do, they will say, can you give us the names of three people that we can contact who are using Scrimzy? And we'll say, yes, here are some names. And they will go away and ask them if you're using Scrimzy. Blah, blah, so it blah. means that we don't need to to list. We need we need to have three names, but we don't need to put them in the document. Okay, yeah, which is kind of different from. Let, let me get the 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 two proposals that I was looking at. Um, Okay, so for example, if you go here, this uh, one, 
the the backstage project and you go through around line uh, 150 they are highlighting in this case four customers like american airlines netflix zalando and Telus. so at least in the proposal you or they in yeah this case, sure. and we, we've yeah. got our adopters file as well but i think they'll want to actually speak to somebody from those companies and you know obviously that's like handing over you know email addresses or whatever so that's pii and therefore it doesn't go in the document i think so we can point them to our adopters file that's on our website and you know in our repo to say these are people who we think are using strimzy So what you're saying, you are saying that it's useless to highlight three or four customers as Backstage is doing. Yeah, we can. We we already have our adopters file, so we can you know we can pick pick names from there. But I think they will ultimately want to actually speak to somebody from those companies to say, are you actually using Strimzy in production? So we will have to supply, I think, some sort of contact details of people willing to be contacted. But it doesn't go in the PR. Yeah. So they will speak to, you know, the the whoever is doing the, the due diligence from the TOC will speak to us to say, you know, it, who can I contact at these at these companies? Just to confirm that they are using Strimzy in production. Makes okay. sense. No, no, yes, yes, yes. No, I was just wondering if, yeah, if it's okay filling this part or not with something or just pointing to the adopters. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we can point to the adopters and pick out, you know, sort of particular ones if, you know, that's fine. I think that's, that's all they've done here. Yeah. Okay. And let me see if I have some more. No, I don't think so. Okay, anything else for this? Okay, definitely some progress here. So the last one on the agenda is the survey, which is another thing which we have open for, I don't know how long. So yesterday you went through the questions and left some some comments. But how do we want to proceed with that? Uh, I've not seen uh, any document with the questions in for this time. Oh, you did? Um, you just forgot about it. Did I? Um, but if we're happy with them, then I guess the next thing is to ask CNCF um, if they can set it up in what we used last time was it Survey Monkey or something? Jakub, do you have the link for the survey question somewhere? Yeah, I can definitely find it.
Or should I share it in the chat or in, in the document? Uh, I guess you opened it under the Red Hat account, so you can't share it. Yeah, I think standard it. Yeah, that. Okay, maybe we should move it under my account or under some other account where we can make it public for for everyone. That sounds okay. Like a good start, yeah. yeah. But maybe at least for now you can share it in the chat. Okay, one sec. I anyway, don't see anyone. Yeah, so that's at least the start and and everyone can have a look at the questions. Yeah, I think we can work in uh, the comments and uh, possible comments from uh, from the others and then just uh, a request to publish it from CNCF as I mentioned. Okay, so can everyone try to go through it till next time? Yep. Yeah, I'm happy to have a look at that. And I'm happy to deal with CNCF once we've got it all agreed. Okay. Okay, anything else to the survey? If not, then that's the end of the agenda. So anyone has anything else what's not on the agenda, what was not covered? In that case, I guess, thanks for joining and that's it for today. Thanks folks. Thanks Thank folks, you. bye. 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 bye.